good morning YouTube, Arizona RE. I'm, uh, I didn't get a chance to wash the bike, so you guys are going to have to deal with the dirty uh, walk around of my Triumph Tiger, which it's an adventure bike. It's supposed to be dirty, right? <laughs> it's so damn hot that I'm out before sunrise. Uh, the GoPro is probably lighting everything up real good, but if I point it over there at the mountain, you can see that the sun hasn't come over the mountain yet. So it's slightly before sunrise, uh, about 5.15 in the morning. And, uh, you know, it's getting harder to find places to, to do this kind of stuff in the city. Man, oh man. Everywhere you go, someone's got security, wants to chase you out of their parking lot. Or... So we'll go see what we can do. And uh, this will be the long-awaited walk around of all the gadgets and all the bits and bobs. and Not quite a review of each. Otherwise, this video would be two, three hours long. But uh, I'll go over real quick uh, the bike that I have and everything that I have on it. So stick around. Awesome. Well, good morning, YouTube. Arizona RE. And this is the Tiger 800. Alright folks, so this is the Triumph 2014 Triumph Tiger 800 and um, later on this became the XR model, but it's the base model. It's the one with the cast aluminum wheels. Uh, instead of the spoke wheels, it's got a 19 inch front wheel instead of the 21 like the XC models or the XCXs and on uh, throughout the line. Uh, as you guys might remember, I'll, sh I'll, I'll insert a picture here of what this bike looked like the day I picked it up. Uh, it was very plain. It didn't have uh, a lot of the extras with it, and that was just the way I wanted it. It was a model year closeout, uh, so I was able to get it really, really, really cheap. Um, and even with the money I have into it for the extra things that I've put on it, it, uh, it, still, it still is less than what the bike would have cost had I got it all kitted out uh, from the get-go. So, we're going to go over a few of those things. Uh, first of all... I had never had a Triumph triple or any kind of triple for that matter. Lovely, the sirens are going this morning. <laughs> and I didn't really know what to expect. I, I've ridden inline fours before, obviously parallel twins, but I did not know what to expect from a triple. And guys, the triple has me hooked. The sound, the whine of the engine, the power delivery, everything is... I don't know. It's it's really hard to beat. It's it's indescribable. If you haven't driven, if you haven't ridden a triple, definitely go out and do it. Uh, there's lots of reviews for these bikes, so I'm not going to get too big into it. Other than I, I absolutely love it, <laughs> and I think whenever I do get rid of this Triumph, I, it's probably going to be replaced either with a newer model of the same bike or. Uh, maybe even the Triumph Explorer 1200, which is the 1200 version of this bike. So I'm going to go ahead and get talking about some of the bits and bobs that I've added on. I'm going to go ahead and refer to uh, some of the previous videos. So you guys already know about the Leo Vinci exhaust, right? And I'll go ahead and make reference to that video now so that you guys can go and see how it's installed. And then another video that I made on basically what it's like riding along with it. And of course you can see and hear that in my video this whole time. It's been a great exhaust so far. It doesn't pound your ears. It looks great, mixes in with the bike. Uh, full disclosure here, bike is filthy. I've been riding it around. Uh, I use this bike to commute to work as well as uh, any kind of adventuring or touring that I like to do. So it's filthy. Uh, I just haven't had a chance to clean it. I was on a business trip last week. And then when I got back uh, earlier this week, I was uh, riding it back and forth to work and we got monsoons, so that's just the way it is. <laughs> Let's see, what else? Um, I'm going to refer to the video where I installed the hand guards, the Oxford heated grips. Uh, these things are fantastic. The Triumph shorty levers. I like the shorty levers. They discourage me from putting my whole hand on that uh, brake lever, which the brakes 
are pretty good on this bike uh, you know is it a performance street bike no but it is what it is drop the tank pad on here put these uh, engine bars I call them camera mounts because I I'm not sure how much protection they're actually going to provide the engine or the rest of the bike should the bike tip over they're great places to mount your cameras like I do <laughs> Uh, you guys also remember the windscreen. I added the beak. Um, Jen's Moto Adventures on Instagram. She's the one that I, I saw her video or I saw her pictures where her and her husband have a set of tigers. And uh, they both went out and got the beak for the X XR. And holy moly, it makes such a huge difference. I, I love the way it looks. It finishes it off. And it might be my imagination but I swear that it, it helps beat it helps separate the wind somehow from coming around the edge of the bike because it, it seems to be a little less turbulent while riding it. Um, I've got the Pooj windscreen here. I'm trying to do this real fast because if I went over all the bits and bobs that I've done in slow methodical review process would never get done with this video. <laughs> I also have the uh, the Pooj tire hugger and chain guard, um, you know, that I think should have come from the factory with, with that kind of thing on there. There's also a video where I'm installing that. I'll go ahead and include a link to that in the annotations. I'm also trying to use these cards now too because the, the cards just pop up for a moment. They don't obscure much in the screen and then go away. But you can coast over the screen and click on those cards at any time. So that's kind of cool. I've been using those youtube cards let's see what else have i done that maybe you guys don't know a lot about yet um i did the gv luggage you guys are familiar with that again i can link to the uh to the video where i installed these um one of the things maybe you didn't know about was the alt rider um rack back here this is probably the single best rack for this bike it blends in with it it looks like it was factory as soon as you put it on it just looks fantastic but it's sturdy as hell man <laughs> And it just goes right over top of your old one. So you're not really modifying anything on the bike to put it there. None of this stuff is really a permanent modification. None of the things that I've done. Uh, I like the GV because these uh, the racks and the panniers themselves all come off in a matter of about two minutes. Uh, in addition to that, I've added the uh, dry spec tool tube on the back here. And that helps, uh, I don't know, I got a little bit of OCD, but that helps... That helps balance the um, the look with the exhaust on that side, even though it's pushed out a little bit more. It helps balance it. I don't know. In my brain, it does. But it's also the perfect place to store things. That's going to be my tire repair kit and a couple of extra tools that go in there, along with a very small can of chain lube that I can stop and spray my chain with because we're going to be putting down thousands of miles on this trip coming up. All right. Uh, next is the ass saver and this is the saddleman adventure tourer seat um saddleman also makes another seat for this let me get on the other side where the sun's not blasting out the uh the video quality here here we go they also make a uh another seat it's the sister seat to this it's the sport seat the only difference for this bike is that this channel is uncovered on the sport seat this channel right here and what makes this seat so great? Why is this seat so awesome for touring? It's got um, cooling gel at the top, and then it's got cushioned foam in the middle. So it's a lot like the modern mattresses that you get, the firm mattresses, right? Well, in addition to that, it's got this channel right here. This channel is empty. It's empty, there's nothing in there. So basically, when you put your butt on this seat, um, your cheeks are supporting your weight, and there's zero pressure on your tailbone, zero. I've been able to ride this bike for hours and hours and hours. It's the most comfortable seat I have. I come home and sit in a chair for hours. My tailbone's gonna hurt, not on this bike. It's absolutely amazing. It's, it's actually pretty stunning how amazing it is. So there's that. Uh, oh, I also installed the uh, center stand, which it's not on the center stand currently. I, some electronics here. I've installed these lights. Now these lights, they, they kind of look green in the bright sunlight. I, I really don't care. Um, these lights are Cree U5. That's all I know about them. Uh, I got them a couple years ago when I was going to put them on the CTX. and uh, Or maybe it was just last year. I got them to put them on the CTX. And I never did. 
they just didn't look I, I, I wasn't going to be able to put them on anywhere that was clearly defined I was maybe going to put them on where the uh, front markers are on the CTX but ultimately these bikes come with a place to hook them up and there they are and I used um, a Denali harness wiring harness and that's what this light switch is right here I used a Denali wiring harness that I got off of eBay for uh, I think it was $12 so total cost for this light package here um, with the exception of the relay I had to buy total ex total cost for that whole light setup was was about 50 bucks and uh, man you guys got to see these things they really really make a difference since I've put these lights on I have not experienced people pulling out in front of me so here they are off and here they are on I grant you they don't look like much here on uh, on camera with the in the bright sunlight but they catch your attention pretty good so that's on high intensity then this is on low intensity So it's weird because when they're on low intensity, it looks like they're flashing on the camera, but they're solid to the naked eye. That's so weird. <laughs> I'm using my Hero 4 Silver, and uh, yeah, it looks like they're flashing. So that's weird. And then oddly enough, they do have a modulating setting as well. And when I'm on the freeway, in the, uh, in the passing lane on the freeway, or when I'm uh, in the HOV lane, the or the commuter lane, that's that's what I use. And I have yet to have anybody pull out in front of me. They're really cool lights. They blend in with the look of the bike, so I dig them. Um, Fifty bucks is not a bad investment for driving lights. Even if they crap out, uh, it'll be real easy to replace them. <laughs> uh, let's see another electronic that I added. Let's see right back here. Okay, so I added the Volo light. I have some pictures of when I did that. The Volo light is the license plate bracket light. Okay, this replaces your license plate bracket. I had to uh, auger the holes out a little bit in order for this thing to drop down enough to get, still give me clearance to get the uh, seat popper there. But uh, basically the way this works and the way I have it set up in touring mode is that when I'm doing engine braking, these lights right here will flicker even if I don't touch the brake so that anyone behind you will know that you're slowing down even if you didn't use the brake. So a lot of people riding behind me on the mountain rides and stuff like that, they'll see those lights flicker as I'm engine braking for a turn. It's kind of funny. It, it, it solicits a reaction from the people behind you. Um, got that for visibility. I deleted the, um, the extra reflectors all around there. They just seemed gaudy. All right, next. I. I I don't know where I got this light. I bought this thing several years ago, intending to put it on the infield at one point, and I don't know what I did. <laughs> but I found it in the um, in the glove box, or I mean, in my toolbox. So I decided to employ it. I did my own little bracket here, mounted it up, tied it in, and basically this is what it does. It does this oscillation thing, uh, kind of looks like Night Rider, and it does this thing while you're not on the brake. So I don't know how I'm going to actuate the brake while I'm sitting here. <laughs> so this is what it does when you hit the brake. It flashes on and off 10 times high intensity and then goes solid after 10 flashes. So that's idling or cruising. And when you hit the brake, that lights up. So you can imagine what this bike looks like when I'm slowing down to a stop because as soon as I start braking, as soon as I start, well, as soon as I start slowing down engine braking, these lights are flashing. Then when I hit the brake, the main brake light comes on and this thing starts flashing a lot. Uh, once again, I see that I've noticed that people have slowed down and they've stopped encroaching on me at traffic lights. They don't roll up to me behind me as fast. And I think all those things are valuable. So those are some things I've done. No serious modification. I just use posi tabs to connect everything. Um, it's all reversible. 
it wouldn't even take me a, a couple hours to remove everything I put on here. Let's see, what else, fellas? Uh, for long-term writing, I'm not crazy about how they look, but for long-term writing, I got these pegs right here. And what's good about this is that I've got a camera running over there, so I'm gonna give it that for a moment. Stand by. I have my regular writing position. I have my technical writing position. Then when I want to write an alternate position, then when I want to get really comfortable, and then another technical position and get down low on the tank. All right, so just closing out the last few bits and bobs. Um, let's see, we got the little eyelet mirrors. Hey there, look at that handsome guy. Oh yeah. So you can get these things fairly cheap, a couple dollars at Cycle Gear or whatever. Uh, I went with the SW Motec uh, mini bag here. Uh, the reason was, is I, I know from the last time I went on a trip, I ended up using my, um, I was on the CTX when I went on a tour last year and it had a compartment right there on the tank. So I was able to stuff money in there. I was able to, to pay for entrances to parks and things like that. This bike doesn't have that. And I discovered it when I went on my, um, on my Lake Pleasant camping trip, which I'll post a link to it here if you haven't seen it. Um, so then it was fishing around in my pockets and taking gloves off and stuff like that. It just became too much so I went ahead and got one of these just for the uh, just for the touring trips and it it locks on to a ring so it doesn't sit on the paint there's no magnets no straps or anything like that locks right on there pop it right off it's just big enough to carry my wallet my phone and uh, when I want to pop this off I can and just throw it in there and take it with me or throw it in one of these bags and lock it up oh man I almost forgot yes I also got the uh, Rizoma Racing Components, this little thing here, the, the black uh, rear brake reservoir. Super nice. Uh, just because it looks sweet, it's not a giant hunk of plastic, and if I do bang into it, well, this one's a little more robust. It's, uh, it's, it's aluminum, so. If you guys are looking to get one of these Tigers, definitely go do it. Oh, I guess I can't leave out the GPS. Um, <clears throat> this GPS is on loan to me from a buddy. And uh, yeah, I put on a custom home screen. You really, you just edit your own photograph and, and set it to come on. It's not that big a deal. And he loaned it to me because he used it once for a long trip and has never used it again. <clears throat> the real cool thing about it is that it interfaces with my phone so I can leave my phone in the bag and phone calls and things like that, they pop up on here. You can push the button or through your Cena, you can go ahead and, and connect to it. So this thing connects directly to the Cena, and then you connect this to your phone through Bluetooth. Uh, it's on a wiring harness here, so it's fully charged, but it also has its own battery in there. The wiring harness is crazy stupid easy to, uh, to put together. And uh, this is going to help me. I've plotted my, I've plotted my points on uh, Garmin's free software, the Basecamp, I think it's called. And uh, I'll be using that, and then I'll have my phone's GPS as a backup. So that's where we're at on it. This is the walk around of my uh, Tiger 800. I hope you guys like it, and I hope you guys enjoy the upcoming trip. Well, YouTube, I hope you enjoyed the walk around. Um, I know it maybe it seemed rushed and whatnot, but I'd done so much to the bike I didn't want to uh, to make it like a 40-minute video, you know. So I, I tried to I tried to push through it real quick. I hope you guys find it interesting. Any questions you might have, please go ahead and ask below, and uh, I'll try and answer them. It, if you go back and look at to look at many of the if you go back and look at many of the videos that I put up in regards to the uh, the stuff I put on the bike, a lot of the part numbers and stuff like that are in those videos. So, you know, 
if maybe the question is, hey, what's the part number for the Altrider uh, GV luggage monokey kit? Well, it's in that video. It's right at the beginning, as a matter of fact. I put it right up front so you don't have to sit through the whole review of those boxes. Now, the other thing I forgot to mention was the um, I, I, I took off the Pirelli tires. Uh, the Pirelli tires, they weren't really dual sport tires anyway, so I don't feel like I've lost anything. But I switched to the Michelin PR4s. They're the, basically the highest rated tire uh, for this bike as far as uh, quality goes, both in life and, and grip. There may be tires that last just a little bit longer than these, but none of them seem to have the performance that these do. And I have to say that it, it really changed the character of this bike. It really, really did. This thing feels like it's just stuck to the road now. Whereas those others, um, they were a little sketchy. Anyway, you folks have a good holiday weekend. Happy 4th of July to my American friends. And... Um, I guess to the Brits, you know, shove off, eh? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, happy Independence Day, America, and you guys have a good weekend.